Hello guys, my name is Alex and this is my vlog about life in Ukraine. In the comments under my video I'm regularly asked about the attitude of regular Ukrainians to the situation in the country, to the war basically. Are people scared? Do people support the intention of the government to fight to the bitter end? Do ordinary Ukrainians hate ordinary Russians or only Russian government? I've never answered such questions because it's impossible. Because very many people live in these lands, uh, they have different opinions and sometimes these opinions contradict each other. So without being a propagandist, you just uh, cannot answer such questions with a simple yes or no. But in this video I will try. Not to be a propagandist, of course, but uh, to show you the different opinions that exist in Ukrainian society on this subject. In this video, I'll describe some factions that exist in the society, their attitude towards uh, the situation in the country, and the reasoning, at least high-level reasoning, behind this attitude. A small remark before we start. This classification is not more than just uh, my own interpretation of the situation, so don't take it too seriously. The first faction is the most uh, straightforward one. Let's call them as they call themselves reasonable people. These people just repeat after their TV sets. It uh, doesn't have to be the TV, it can be the uh, a favorite Facebook or YouTube blogger, but uh, the idea is that these people find out their own opinions through the screen. These people are easy to identify because of extensive use of manipulative arguments. Because they repeat after someone, they don't have any arguments to back up their opinions, so they use manipulation instead. It's obvious that all normal people understand that. Only fools think that. You get the point. If only fools can support some idea and you support this idea, it means that you are a fool and a reasonable person don't need to explain to you why the idea is wrong. Reasonable people always support the ruling ideology. Currently, the ruling ideology states that the only acceptable outcome of the conflict with Russia is the return of all Ukrainian territories as they were in 1991. And all the normal people understand that this outcome is also the best one. The next faction you can encounter in real life, not only in social media. Let's call them remote patriots. People who love their country, but prefer not to live in it. More than 10 million Ukrainians lived abroad before the war, and about 8 million more left the country in 2022. There are different groups and factions among them as well, and Remote Patriots is probably the most active one. The defining feature of these people is their bloodlust. Since the war can barely affect them personally, they consider it as a football match. They cheer their favorite team and want it to win at all costs. So if you see a Ukrainian that calls for uh, providing Ukraine with nuclear weapons or calls for some third country to join the war, it is very probable that this Ukrainian lives somewhere in Toronto or Detroit. Speaking of patriotism, we cannot help but mention true patriots, people who are usually called with this word. They can be recognized by extensive use of abstractions, abstract concepts. Homeland, freedom, democracy, patriotism is itself an abstract concept. The attitude of these people to the situation in the country fully depends on the definitions they were given for these obstructions. In the video about Ukrainian euphemisms, I provided an example with the word liberation. When both uh, Ukrainians and Russians uh, capture some settlement, they call this act liberation. Why? 
because the definition for an abstract term freedom for Ukrainian true patriots is paying taxes to Kiev government and for Russian true patriots it's paying taxes to Moscow government. So for both sides it sounds logical and correct. The next two factions represent people who personally lost something as a result of the war. A family member, a home, a job, maybe savings. As a result of personal loss, there are two options. Some people become victims. Victims are ones who want to, to end the war as quickly as possible. Since negotiations are usually the quickest way to end a war, victims are in favor of negotiations. The motivation behind this position is quite straightforward. These people don't want to lose something more. Some victims also don't want others to lose something. Because for them, unlike for example remote patriots, the impact of war on people is not just an interesting topic to discuss in the kitchen, but a very real thing. The second option is reapers. They also have uh, personally lost something as a result of the war. But unlike victims, they want the war to last as long as possible, so that as many people as possible would lose something too, and uh, the reapers would not be alone in their sorrow. People who post on social media long lists of uh, requirements uh, only after fulfilling which uh, the war can be over usually belong to this faction. Whew. Okay, I've already introduced you to five major factions of Ukrainian society, but that is not all. There are more. For example, currently there is a rapidly growing faction that in media is usually called Cowards. Cowards are people who don't mind at all uh, paying taxes to a particular government or, for example, making uh, Crimea people pay taxes to a particular government. But for some reason, they are not ready to die uh, for this lofty goal. The point I'm trying to make in this video is that despite uh, all the bullshit in media, Ukraine is not situated in a fantasy world with good and bad people. As well as your country, it's situated in a real world where people have different opinions and reasonings behind those opinions. That's it guys, thank you for your attention. Write in the comments if you would like to see more content about psychology on my channel and if so, which topics would you like me to cover. Share this video with your friends, it really helps in developing my channel and as usually, like, subscribe and have a nice day.